Hello everybody, welcome to this week's, I mean, shh. Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users and I am recording this at night, so I've got to be a little bit quieter than, than usual. Um, I'm recording this at night time because uh, apparently there's a hurricane coming in tomorrow and uh, everybody's kind of freaking out. So in order to get this video done, I'm recording it before and then uh, hopefully no power cuts or internet issues will, will, will cause us any problems. Um, don't worry though, I, I, I actually checked the maps, it's not coming near here. Um, okay, so first of all, a big thank you uh, to all of my sponsors who basically pay for my time to work on Inkscape. Um, thank you all so much. If it, if it wasn't for you, I just would be working on other things. Um, if you'd like to join them and increase the amount of time that I'm able to spend on Inkscape, please consider visiting the, the links to my pa Patreon and my LibrePay. Um, okay, so you'll you'll remember that I didn't actually make a video last week, and that's because I was actually sick by the end, end, end of the week. Um, I did actually manage to get some work done la last week. Um, so uh, this is actually a bumper video that describes two weeks worth worth of work or there, thereabouts. So this week's all about um, raster images, which are basically pixel-based images instead of vector images what, that we use in SVG. As you know, Inkscape can actually import raster images and then um, you can export them into things like PDF files. So the first thing that I worked on is actually being able to export those raster images into the PDF file. That's what I did last week. Um, I, succe I successfully managed to get both PNGs and J JPEGs to be embedded into the PNG. I have to flip them. Why co coordinate issues again? Um, I think I'm going to have to revisit the actual data pro pro processing though, because the raster images have to also be color managed and the um, way in which they're being imported into the PDF currently doesn't give me a lot of hope that they are being color managed correctly. So I want to control that process more directly. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the required uh, interfaces to basically write the raster images directly into the PDF file. Okay. Um, this week, what I worked on in order to, to tackle that color managed raster image situation is I uh, produced a JPEG and TIFF CMYK exporter, right? So this means that you can export images from Inkscape uh, with color managed uh, settings. Basically, you can tell it to export the raster image and then it does an SRGB to CMYK conversion using the correct settings that you want to set. Um, then, and this is where it kind of gets cool, I, I kind of did a lot of the stuff on Inkscape itself, not not the PDF stuff, like Inkscape's color managed stuff itself. And, and um, now that I kind of understand what it is that it's trying to do. Um, I, I worked on the, uh, the user interface. Um, come, come have a look at this. This, this is pretty cool. Okay, so can you see the, the, the Inkscape that I've got here? It's pr pretty exciting stuff. Um, let's open up a patches file that I have been playing with. So this is a CMYK uh, SVG. And um, the idea is, is that in Inkscape, you should be able to actually um, see better the colors that you have. So the first thing is, you, typically you would go to preferences and you would basically set this uh, color management and you've basically got uh, a set of monitor pro profiles and a checkbox that says use profile from user that doesn't work. Um, and then you've got proofing that says simulate output on screen, mark output of gam gamut, warning color, uh, device profile, which is pretty much the important part, and then the device rendering intent and black point con compensation. These options will make sense to a lot of people that do print, um, but they are very confusing. And so, um, yeah, I, I got rid of all of this and, um, and changed it. Well, I didn't get rid of all of it. I got rid of a lot of it. Okay, so let's have a look at what we have now. Uh, now, the question is, why? Ah, uh, yes. Mm. The 
forgive me, I, I just need to compile it. Um, you know, programming is sometimes a little bit uh, hairy. I think I was fixing a different bug at the time when this was happening. Okay, there we go. Okay, now check check this one out. This is this is the new one. You go into the same preferences. Okay, so this is the new ver version, and as you can see, all, all of those checkboxes have gone, and uh, basically it's just the core options. First of all, the monitor profiles isn't some giant list of things that don't matter. It's just the first option that says controlled by the operating system, which is basically what everybody will want. And then you can select a monitor profile if your operating system sucks. And then there's proofing, just proofing options for the device profile and the rendering intent and the black point compensation. That this is not where you switch on the proofing mode for that. Let me reload my patches file. Yep. For that, we use um, you use this menu here, and you can see there's more b buttons now. Uh, the first one, it looks like a little print printer, and that turns on soft pr proofing. And then the second one is the gamut warning that tells you when things are out of gamut. And then there's even a little preferences button that gets you back to the pre preferences. So you can very easily uh, basically, t you know, the, the idea is to guide users into where the functionality is going to exist. Uh, but that's not all. I also wanted to make it more accessible for, from, from the menu. So there's a view color mode and a proof colors, display profile and setup op options. So if you get confused by this little, little button here, it's also in the menus. And um, yeah, this works a lot better now. It's not entirely finished. There's a lot of um, sort of uh, polishing to do and maybe some design decisions. Uh, but I'm hoping everybody will be really happy with the fact that like it looks like Inkscape actually has um, you know proper color management support now. Okay, let's get back. Okay, so let's talk about the things that have been going on in Inkscape that aren't related to my work. Um, as you know, Inkscape is an open source pro project, and there are a lot of con contributions from a lot of people. First of all, I want to highlight three new contributors to Inkscape who have never contributed anything before. Um, and we get this kind of contributor all the time. They basic, basically just fix one thing, um, and it's great to see. First of all, uh, Sidhant uh, Argwal. He fixed a compatibility issue between the text, SVG text and Critter. Um, basically, Critter is supporting more SVG, and that's great to see. So you should be able to import uh, basically the stuff you make in Inkscape into Critter. Um, Leopoldo Carnard, uh, Carnada, Carnardio, sorry. Uh, he added a command line option for PNG exporting. And then uh, Mark Antoine, he fixed PDF input text colors. Uh, great work, guys. Thank you for contributing to Inkscape. Uh, and then we have uh, three contributors that have been contributing for a very long time. So Daniel Boyles and Tav are basically doing their GTK4 work. There are so many merge requests, so many refactors. I really couldn't go into them. Um, but just know that work is continuing and it's looking good. Uh, P PBS has fixed a bunch of stuff, including uh, a stroke style bug. And Javier has added a feature where if you're using the, the spray, um, it'll actually preview what the objects are that you're going to spray next. So you have a little bit more of a sense about like what it's about to do. Um, and I believe he's got some other pat patches in mind as well. Okay, so that's it for this week. Thank you for joining me on this update video. Um, this update video after dark, this update video dark mode. Um, and hopefully I will see you next week, assuming I haven't been swept away. <laughs>